Hello my friend, how are you? In this video, I want to give you an overview of SPSS in case you're not familiar, okay? So I'll take you through the main menu, the data view, the variable view, and just give you a few hints on the software. So if you're not familiar and you launch the software, this is what you see. So this main general uh, data view sheet here, okay? So let me tell you, let me take you first through the general menu on top. So if you click on file, you've got here the general file things that you have in any other software. So new, for example, if you want to create a new data sheet, uh, open if you want to open previous data sheets that you have worked on, import if you want to import it from anywhere else that you might have a file. But really important here, you can save your files. And the first tip that I have for you is every time you, you run a test, SPSS is going to open another window that's called the output. So the output is, the, is always the result from your tests. So make sure that you're saving both files, your output with your results and your main data set, okay? And so it's really important and um, so you don't miss anything. So make sure to be saving both files, okay? On edit, just normal editing, undo, redo. If you wanna cut and paste, that's where you're gonna do that. Uh, view, if you want to create grid lines, uh, if you want to change fonts and so on. Uh, data, here it's interesting because on data you can select particular cases. So if you want to run a test where you select just a few cases to run a test with, or if you want to split your data set, for example, you can do that here too. Transform, if you need to transform your data set. Analyze, now here is really important, analyze. Analyze because all of your tests are done here. So um, descriptives, if you want to run just normal frequencies, uh, means, modes, uh, standard deviation, cross tabs, that's all done here. Uh, compare means, that's where you're going to do your paired simple t-test, independent simple t-test, one-way ANOVA. Generally in your model, where you do univariate and multivariate analysis, regressions, correlations, scale where you do reliability. So all of your tests will happen here on Analyze. So it always start, starts here on top of the menu. Graphs, if you have to do graphs, but just a second suggestion for me, um, the graphs are not very great that, that you can do here on SPSS. So what I would suggest to you is extract your, your data, extract it to um, uh, Excel, and then you can do your tests, your graphs on Excel. That's usually what I do. Utilities, not much you're probably going to need here. Extensions, if you have any patch to extend, probably won't need it. Window and um, help. So if you have any general questions, you can type in there and see what you've got. All right. So this is the main menu. The main things that you're going to be using here, file to save, open, uh, have any new data set. Edit, if you need to edit anything on your data set. And analyze, because that's where all of your tests will happen. Okay. All right. So what are we looking here is the data set. And the main thing that I need you to keep in mind is that the software is kind of like a sheet of paper because it has two sides and you can always flip from one side to the other side. So one side of the, of the sheet of paper is what we call here the data view. So if you can see here in the bottom, the data view. The data view is what we're seeing here. So in this data view, each block that you're gonna have here is one data entry. So each line, each horizontal line will be one case or one participant or one person that is answering your, your study. And each column is one variable. So it can be a question of your questionnaire, an item of your questionnaire. So it's a variable, all right? So it's not labeled. So at the moment it's VAR for variable because we haven't created the label. And I'll show you how we're gonna do this, all right? So this is one side of the sheet of paper. You can right click here and paste so if you copied uh, the data from Excel, for example, you can directly paste in here, all right? And this is where you should have all filled with numbers. So in the bottom here, if we click on variable view, we go to the other side of the sheet of paper. And this is a really important one because this is the side where you create your variables. And that's why it's called variable view. And what I always tell my students, um, whenever you do a study, take some time to develop the variable view uh, with care because if you have any problems here then it's going to reflect on your results so it's really important whenever you do a study put some nice music on make yourself a nice coffee a nice tea i particularly like drinking beer i have to admit 
put whatever drink that you like, take some time and prepare this variable view, all right? So let me tell you, let me take you one section here at a time. The name is the name of the variable. So let's say that you, the first question has to do with, for example, uh, frequency of consumption. So let's say that you're doing a marketing study and you measure how frequently people consume, uh, I don't know, beer, for example. So let's say we're gonna write here frequency underline. Why underline? Because there's one thing here on the variables, which is it would not allow you to have spaces between words. All right, so usually what I do is I just add underline. So frequency underline of underline consumption underline beer. All right, so that's my variable there frequency of consumption underline beer type is what type of variable that you have here so if you have numerical variable or if you have dates or if you have currencies or if you have string which is when you have a, a set of um of uh, letters for example but the default will always be numeric assuming that you're running um that you have obviously numbers so sorry the width of your um of your data usually the the default is eight which should be more than enough the decimals how many decimals you want to use the the default is always two and usually two is absolutely fine the label here is if you want to create any labels for for your for the question and that's going to come out on your output the next one is values values once you click on this box you see there's a box here on the right side if you click on this box and this window appears here and this is where you set the labels for the values that you have for example in this question here I created frequency of consumption of beer right so if you measure that on a liquid scale ranging for example from one that you never consume five to very frequently you consume this is where you would add here the anchors so for example you could add a value to one to never drink here you can add spaces between words there's no problem and then you click on add and let's say that uh, the two on your scale this is all hypothetical right let's say that the second uh, point on your scale would be like rarely and click rarely add let's say three is uh, sometimes and then you add four let's say that that is often add five very often and you click on add and you click on OK and here you have the values for this variable that you that you're measuring okay um, let's say that you have a number of items in one question and they all have the same values you can simply right click here copy and then you're going to uh, right click again paste and then all of the values that you just created you can simply paste for the next variable okay um, all right the next thing is uh, for missing, if you have uh, what you want to do with missing values, so um, what you should allow the, the software to do. The columns, the number of columns that, um, that you assign, again, the default is eight and it's usually very fine. Alignment, how you want to align your, your, uh, the value in the column. So if you want to have it centralized, if you want to um, have a line to the left or to the right or to the center, and the measure. Now, the measure here is really important because you're telling the software what type of data that is. If it's interval data, if it's ordinal data, if it's nominal data, and that's really important that you set this correctly. So for example, if I just use a Likert scale here where I had five point anchors, then obviously my measure here is a scale, all right? So usually that's the main thing. So with the moment that you create the variables here, once you go back to the data view, and now your variable is already set here on top. See here, frequency of consumption of beer. And um, yeah, and then you have here your variables and now you can simply copy and paste the data set that you have from your questionnaire and start doing your analysis by clicking here on top on analyze on your menu, all right? So these are the main features of your top menu. This is the data view. This is where you're gonna have your numerical um, values 
Remember that it's like a two-sided sheet of paper. So here's the data view. If you click on the bottom on variable view, this is where you create your variables. Take your time to make sure that you do this correctly. So if you have a long questionnaire, it's very common that you are going to skip one item or another, one question or another. And it's really important that you said the names correctly. Remember that the software won't allow you spaces <clears throat> between words. So usually I use underline and that's absolutely fine. What is important here to set your values correctly and it's usually by, by clicking here on the right side of this box. Okay, so this window here can pop up. And assigning the measure of your values of your, sorry, the, the measure of your data, that's really important here, okay? So those are the main things for the software. Uh, I have another, some other videos with different tests just to have a look on the music stats org um, YouTube channel. There's a lot of stuff also on the musicstats.org website. There's a, um, a stat SPSS guide that I wrote that I use for my business and marketing research class for my students. You can also download there. Uh, and there's also some, some examples that I run in a data set that you can download. So those are the main things. Hope it was useful to you. Okay, so see you later. Bye-bye.